Hello everyone. Today I have a guest who is working as a software engineer in one of the leading software company JP Morgan. She initially started her career working in Cognizant, then she moved into product-based company like ThoughtWorks, Athena and JP Morgan. So today she is going to share her experience how she was able to make this transition from service-based to product-based companies. This video is going to be very 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 informative. Please watch this video fully. My name is Devraj. Welcome to my channel. Hi Bhavya, Hi. how are you? I'm good, thank you. What about you? Yeah, I'm also doing good Bhavya. So first of all, thank you so much for accepting my invite and joining with me today to share your experience with us. So we're gonna have a very good discussion about your experience working at different companies, like how you got offer from different product-based companies. How are we gonna discuss today? So let's start. Can you give you a short introduction about yourself? So my name is Bhavya Shri. So I, I studied in BIT Chennai, Mellon Institute of Technology and uh, in campus placement I got placed. So I attended three interviews basically which was TCS, Infosys and Cognizant. So out of which I got selected Cognizant because it was a higher pay and higher designation. So I went with that and that was very particular that I wanted to develop a role which I explained in interviews as well. So I got a developer role at Cognizant. And there was an added advantage that I got an uh, internship as well at Cognizant while I was studying my fourth year. So I did an internship and later on I joined Cognizant where I worked for around two and a half years. So after that I, uh, I switched to Athena Health. So there I worked for one year, one month I guess. And after that I switched to ThoughtWorks wherein I worked one year. And then now I'm work currently working at JPMC. So I'm a full stack developer. Uh, Java Spring Boot and Angular is used here. Before that I, was, I also worked on React. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, nice. So, can you share your experience how you entered into Cognizant? What were the challenges you faced? And uh, basically, if you see right, as a freshers, we will be having multiple things. We are not so mm -hmm. sure about the corporate life. So, it is a, something very new. We need some guidance. So, you would have faced a similar situation, right? Can you explain mm -hmm. that uh, how you got into your first job, how uh, difficult it is, and how challenging it is? Can you share us that? So, yeah. So, uh, since it was a campus placement, still there were like um, thousand plus applications for that role, after which I got selected. Uh, luckily, I got, I did get selected, uh, but I am from a non-CS background, so I studied triple E actually. So, when they gave us an internship role, I, I took it and parallel I was doing my project. Again, time handling was a little difficult, but then it is manageable if you plan it. So when I got into corporate life, right, so we are so used to calling sir, ma'am and all. So when we call sir there, they will like stand up on the bench, do that, do this and all. So, I mean, there's a culture shock when you move from college to uh, corporate life. So it's completely different. All things that you've learned, like basic coding I did, I learned for cracking, cracking that views and all which was the actual project that they gave us to work on, to learn was like on another level. So obviously they'll be like, you'll be overwhelmed with the amount of code you'll see like to learn and all. But then you have to keep your cool and uh, understand, ask questions, ask your seniors, they'll help you out and all. So internship started like that. So three months was my internship. Uh, so pretty much it was like small, small things we used to do like uh, fixing bugs. That actually helps actually when you fix bugs, right? you should take that opportunity instead of writing code at first because you will go through code, you will understand and you will know like how, how they are writing it how what is going into that implementation and all so I, I suggest like you take that first to understand what the code is and all so so biggest thing is like culture shock and obviously overwhelming feeling that I will I be able to do it since I was from a non cs background it was like on another level that feeling was on another level and then came my uh, then after after three months obviously two months they gave us a break and uh, then they, they, they got onboarded as a full-time employee so i got onboarded as an associate so there i was asked to work on java <laughs> and you will not trust me i didn't read i mean i had zero knowledge on java they didn't even teach java they taught us c but again c and data such as they didn't even teach java and our curriculum because i was from triple so it was like Again, an overwhelming feeling, fear, like, will I be able to do, will I lose my job, will I, will I, how will, what will people think if I do anything wrong, but that is the problem, that is the part actually, if you lose a day, 
then only you'll learn something so there were you know there were some mistakes that i did there was one particular mistake that broke the production and but that is how i learned uh, like this is how you have to proceed you have to learn this java yeah you, you, you have to put an extra effort at start at least you have to put an extra hours extra effort for you to survive in that project actually so that is how i started so since i knew i was going to work on java so they were like till 2 12 2 am 12 am i used to be awake and read about it so that i am proficient in it so that is how it started so for every pressure the problem is like you will be having a lot of fear whether i'll be able to survive whether i'll be able to do this just go for it that's it just go for it people will guide you any everywhere that i've been to i've gone i mean any team lead i've been to they have helped a lot like they like they'll help you like this is how you can go through this is how you can proceed even if you do a mistake this is not you're supposed to do this is not how you're going to do so make mistakes and learn from it that doesn't mean you break everything please don't do that <laughs> but yeah that fear you have to overcome for sure the fear will be there culture shock will be there like the environment will be different people will be uh, so so conscious about work but when you are in college like okay one day you didn't do the other day you'll cover up but here it won't happen like that so culture shock and fear is the most uh, thing that haunts a pressure and no guidance as well so uh, when you are joining come learn about the company learn about your role from hr if you are able to ask them so learn about your learn about the for sure and you will have you will have a number of friends you will have a senior working there just learn from them just ask what is your company doing and so that way you will be prepared at least for this so i think you are the not the first one who broke the production many freshers used to do that right uh, while working in cognizant how you are able to crack this much companies so when i decided that i'm going to switch uh, my role because i know two and a half years is a good amount in one company so then uh, i started applying in n number of websites like whichever i used to find whether it's legit not legit which is not good just see whether it's a legit website or not because you'll get you'll end up getting like fake calls asking for money and all. many people got scammed that way as well so be aware of where you're applying so i primarily now that i've learned come came across that phase now i primarily apply in linkedin and opry mostly and some website some companies suggest indeed.com that's it but other companies when i when i just started to apply when i was in cognizant and start just started to apply i used to get like n number of fake calls asking for money we'll give you this much package we'll you uh, give you uh, just pay us this much i'll we'll give you this much this company that company very good companies they used to tell me so but never get into that just do it on your own since you have, since you will have some experience at least so always do it on your own so i suggest mailing them now pre and indeed indeed.com but uh, so when i started and after some time i realized like now pre and linkedin is one you have to get, keep your linkedin updated then i updated my linkedin which is a bad sign always always keep your linkedin profile uh, updated you you will get hits from hr for sure if you have a good profile so always keep that updated then i updated and then i started applying and then i started getting legit calls so first five six interviews i failed miserably like like the epitome of miserable uh that level of i failure i saw so i couldn't answer questions i was not confident enough uh, the questions which i knew that also i forgot because i was i was so fearful right so i didn't know what to do and all so it took some five six interviews for me to realize like you have to be confident what are what and all to be what what are they expecting that and and uh, those five six interviews the mistakes that i did was i never read the jd which is again a bad sign always read the jd always see if it fits your description or not if this will fit, fit my profile if this is that text tag that i i want to work on if this is a text tag what kind of questions can be there so always check jd and prepare on basis of that as well because some things which you know they won't they might not require in jd so unnecessary preparing them is again a no, no point so that is how after five six interviews failure i actually got a call from one of the hrs where in one of the interviews i failed miserably they were like see uh, you speak english good so i'll change your uh, domain to po i mean product owner. i said no and this kind of situations also when you go through when they say things like that just think what you actually want to do 
if you want to continue your continue as a developer go switch your stream but i didn't want to switch so i continued and then seventh interview the eighth interview i started performing better and better and better that made me work at it and finally i cracked the athena i cracked uh, uh, along with athena i cracked lean swift as well and for athena they were like around uh, there should be actually five rounds but uh, the director who interviewed me left so they connected that in that round again so i ended up giving like seven rounds so but generally it is around five rounds where in true technical managerial and then director round and hr which is all common again uh, so pretty much whatever based on your experience they will ask basic questions they last so always keep your basics perfect when you say you are working on java let's say python or anything always keep your basics on basic should be on your you know nail uh, tip of your nails actually so that is how you should be fluent fluent because when you are early in your stages they won't expect much but they will expect you to know all the basics at least that you have worked on in your projects so that is how i learned and learned and then i started looking into my projects where they can ask questions you know this is a good point to ask if they ask about my project what i have to explain them what kind of uh, uh, explanation should i keep it more technical should i keep it more uh, functional that and all you will have to prepare before you go for the interview so it's not like you have to prepare only technical stuff you also have to prepare like what you are what you are going to tell about your project because that also matters at the end of the day so i generally read through websites like tutorial points so some some uh, i would check my project see what kind of concepts are used that concepts i would come back and read in google any tutorial point so so many websites and one more thing is Though those five six interviews that I failed, I never read about the company, which is again a ba- very bad sign. Always read or read about the company, see whether it's a legit company or not. What kind of company it is, whether it, whether you will like that company, what is the work culture, how does it work, whether it will fit your description. So all that you have to check before you go for the interview. So and then be a number of people be aware of that as well. One more important point is please do not write n number of pages in your resume. Nobody is going to read it. Please very, never very write n number yeah. of pages. So those are the very hmm. important points which you shared, Bhavya. So you said about the companies, right? The number of rounds. Can you also tell what are the preparation strategy you did from your side? Because usually, if someone is applying for uh, these companies, a uh, thought works, Athena or JP Morgan, hmm. so they need to know something, right? They cannot go directly and uh, hmm. attend the interview, correct? So what you did from your end, or if someone is applying for the same company, what they need to do? What are all the things they need to do? Uh, they need to know. So can you share about that also? Pretty much, uh, the strategy was uh, keeping your basic concepts very clear. So when I speak, so like I told you, I was mostly on Java Spring Boot and recently React and Angular. So Java Spring Boot is my forte. So when you say Java, you have to be sure that you are clear on all the concepts, which includes, which is like core Java, which is like the basic of Java. So always have your basics clear. Although you have five years experience, six years, they are going to ask some or the other question on six. Uh, Uh, basics and always so we've seen that newer versions of java keep on keep on gets released you know now and then there. always keep your tap on that like what is the version that is going on what is the difference between your version and that version what are the advantages that has been added because people will ask questions on that i still remember i was working on java 8 and one of the companies asked about java 11 they told since you are working on java you should be aware of what the other features are that are going, coming as an addition in the you know higher versions and all so that is a very good point actually so always keep a tap on the versions at least know some points like what are the additions that has been done so basic concepts and the things that you use data structures uh, so the company which asked the most data structures was athena actually and followed by jp morgan also asked uh, other than that other companies also ask like data data structures but very basic level they are not going to ask like high level algorithms and all but they will ask the basic amount of the data so let's say hash table hash map those kind of things uh then uh followed by i also always go through your project be thorough with your project always be thorough with your project any question they would ask let's say what kind of design you used what kind of uh, architecture you use why did you use that architecture is there any production issue that you solved that you know it was very challenging all those questions will definitely come in any 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 set of interviews and that particularly this uh, this particular thing happens in the mostly in the second round first round is mostly like testing basics by asking you to write basic code 
you know when you say it's streams like you have streams you have functional interface they'll ask you to write an example they'll ask you to write an example on singleton so things like that is will happen in the first round and second round also you can expect basic round of coding plus a good amount of questions on your project always know what your architecture is what your project does why did you choose that architecture or why did you choose a, went with that db you know uh, so one of the projects i used a non uh, non relational database so they asked why did you go for that why didn't you go for a relational database you should have a, you you should justify it so that level of questions and all you can expect in second round and third round is managerial which is like a basic thing like uh, about your background they in managerial round they assess you like what kind of kind of candidate are you are are you going to be a team player or are you going to be a single person who will work on everything so if you not you should always portray yourself in some ways like the it culture is basically about teamwork so always keep that in mind punctuality all that they will write test and then director are also pretty much the same then hr around always before going to hr around see how to negotiate how you have to put forward how you can justify what whatever uh, cities you are asking how you can justify that ctc obviously i'll say may maybe this is what we can give and all so you should be able to justify what kind of uh, why you want why you are thinking like this ctc would suit you suit you right so always always there are n number of videos if you search on internet in instagram facebook youtube everywhere there are n number of videos where they show like how to talk to an hr how to negotiate how to justify your skills and all so those are the this is what basically i generally i follow so thing is basics your project uh, display your uh, good features and like basically teamwork and functionality all that stuff and then they will also test like let's say you get some work urgent work whether you want to sit and do it or not or will you postpone it so that kind of question then that questions will come sometimes they ask directly all that you have to remember and keep your confidence level up to some point at least do not break down and never beat around the bush if you don't know anything just say okay i don't know maybe i forgot and all but never beat around the bush this is one common thing people do they'll just speak something like which is not even related to the question that is that gives a very bad impression never do that okay so this is what i follow yeah yeah that's lot of lot of lot of inputs actually you started from the <laughs> basics and you went up to the negotiation part so i think bob you covered almost everything which uh, and even <laughs> pressure <Sorry>. to <laughs> even pressure to experience will face this that is so informative bob yeah i think i will going to end the technical part so you almost covered uh, top to end so now i'm going to ask uh, something some question which is out of technical so you worked at different companies right JV so you can tell uh, some of the good thing about the companies which you work ha uh, that better is the question, nice better question hmm. so jp morgan i'm still uh, new so i'm like 5 months old so i still find myself new but it is not but still jp morgan in terms of culture if i have to speak right thoughtworks is one of the best organization like they give you and they'll they give you full freedom like they give you a laptop and they're like they don't have any restrictions on laptop like nothing is blocked on the laptop you can see anything but there are some companies like uh, cognizant and many see jp morgan because of security issues they block some websites right but here and thought was they trust you completely they do they give you and any like full freedom you can do anything let's say you want to switch your role as well i want to work on python now i'm board of java i want to work on python they'll give you that resources they'll ask you uh, just learn this and maybe they'll ask you to attend some uh, others uh, other interviews in the inside the organization they'll help you switch if you want to go from developer to queue that also you can do you can be a product owner as well so that amount of freedom you can see in thoughtworks and when it uh, talk in terms of work and all right the work uh, the tech stack that i loved was in athena the tech stack was really good they were like after uh, they were like whatever comes new we have to take it we have to move forward we have to you know not get stuck here anything new that comes they would you know try to move on to that so that was one of the good things that i found in athena and cognizant is like my parent company which taught me everything pretty much everything like any so they took me as a fresher they gave me a associate role they didn't even give the basic role they gave me a good role so Trust on a fresher for that level of role was one of the good things that I had in Cognizant. And JP Morgan, obviously, everyone knows it's a very big company. It's a very good company in terms of culture. It also it is good. Tech stack that I am working now on is also good. So culture is also very good here. 
so pretty much tech, technical wise i like athena culture wise like thought nothing can be thought works so that is it but if i have to say my favorite thing i think i'll say athena all the people will see but yeah everyone knows actually athena is my one of my very favorite company the director there was very good i was doing my part time mba when i when i was working in athena so i didn't inform that i'm going a part time they uh, the director agreed to coach me as well so that level of um, employee satisfaction they look after actually so that is also one of the good things and even, even in jp morgan you know recently they had eaw called as a employee appreciation week like the whole week they celebrate the employees they give you n number of things to celebrate so that is also one of the good things every company has their own thing but these are in particular that i love about the companies okay you portrayed in very beautiful way <laughs> Yeah, that is so nice. <laughs> nice to hear. Okay, but yeah, I think we are almost at the end of the video. You gave more insights and more informations. Definitely, this is going to help lot of people who are looking for a job, job seekers, and even who are studying in college. This is going to be helpful because these are the things which they need to learn. Definitely, this yeah, is so yeah. informative. So, thank you so much, Bavia, for sharing your knowledge.